Hi, I'm Donald with Steambrite Supply, and today we're going to do our second test with this uh, mighty 3500 watt instantaneous uh, heater, and we're going to compare it to the 2400 watt heater. Now, in our first test, uh, we just turned them all on and we weren't using any water, and this one spiked to 300 degrees. Uh, this one did about 275, and then we turned the water on, and we thought, well, that's just a little too hot, so we went ahead and just cut the video off. Well, this time we're going to kind of do the opposite. First of all, I want to tell you about some of the changes because it did get so hot. Um, we added some additional cooling to this one. Uh, we put some rubber feet on it, and we put a, a vent hole on the bottom, as well as we put another one on the side here. Uh, just the normal convection, some of the hot air that would be inside of it would help cool it off. We also um, put a 600 PSI safety pressure relief valve. This is so that you could lay this hose back into your uh, garbage disposal of your kitchen sink or in the fresh water tank if you're portable. Uh, normally you would feed both of these heaters with the hot water coming out of your carpet cleaning machine. And um, oh, just one other thing, another change that we did, and we took the 600 watt heating rods out of this style and replaced them with the 875s. And that's how we're able to get the additional uh, wattage and we added an additional power cord. So. This one's running 2,400 watts on one cord. This is running basically uh, 3,500 watts, but it's on two cords. So this is going to be easier to run because it's going to run 15 amps per cord, where this is taking a dedicated 20. So this is going to be a little bit more apt to trip some breakers and some 14-gauge uh, wire building environments. Well, this one will plug in absolutely everywhere. Uh, another thing that we did is we took... Uh, by default, in, in this 2400 watt one, they put a 300 degree thermostat, and the way these are set is they're actually sensing the temperature of the outside of the heater here, and when, when this one reaches 200 degrees, it turns off the electricity to the heating rod, which, which looks like this. This is what slid down inside that hole. And this one is a secondary one. It's just a safety bypass. When it reaches 300 degrees, it, this little button pops out. And to reset it, you'd have to actually open the heater up and push this button in to reset it. And because it was already reaching 300 degrees, we figured, well, they probably are turning off, and then we didn't want you to have to break the unit open to, uh, to, to reset it. So we took these off and replaced it with another automatic one so that either heater thermostat can turn it off, but they both have to tell it it's less than 200 degrees to turn on. So these have been running. We just... Uh, normally you'd use these with hot water going into the heater and then you would boost the temperature. In this case we're just going to do a benchmark test. We hooked up uh, the building garden hose water which is currently about uh, 50, looks like 59 degrees. And we're just going to turn them on. They're both coming out of the same garden hose so should be uh, pretty similar and see how well it performs. I'm just going to turn these on, turn these on, and then I wanted to compare to see how much faster this one raises the temperature. may not be very exciting because <laughs> normally you're you're stroking a wand by the way what's on the end of these is an 01 jet spraying full time so it's uh the water's in motion normally you're cleaning carpets you're stroking it you know kind of a, a rinse stroke and then a dry stroke and a rinse stroke and a dry stroke now this one is actually kind of Definitely making an improvement. It went from the 55 degrees to already 70 degrees coming out. And this one's up at 60. Now normally if you uh, fill, feed these with hot tap water from the sink and that's been running through your carpet cleaning machine and then it leaves the machine and goes to an electric heater, most people experience with like a two-thirds rinse stroke and a one-third dry stroke. Uh, about a 25 degree rise with a heater like this. Uh, this one would probably do about a 35 degree 
rise. So, well, this one's definitely uh, jumping up there at 100 degrees, starting off at 55, and this one's at 80. So it is definitely making an improvement. I guess we'll just keep watching it for a minute till it kind of levels out a little bit to see what kind of rise we're going to get out of it. I guess, uh, Kevin, maybe you should at least show that back there it is spraying full time. It is an even test. Oh, this one's up to 100 degrees and that one's up to 160. Well that's pretty good. You know when we started these, these were completely cold. They were not pre-warmed at all so that's uh, definitely more temperature rise than I thought we'd get out of it. Considering it's pretty cold, I'm wearing a jacket today. Just a tidbit of information and here in San Antonio where we're doing the test. If we average out the, the weather seven days a week, 24 hours a day, every day out of the year, our median temperature here in San Antonio, Texas is 72 degrees. So today is definitely a little colder than normal. We're at 139 degrees on the Mighty 2400 and already reached 210. Wow, that's that's pretty impressive. If you ever hook these to tile and grout cleaning machines, you will break them. So don't do that. They're really only engineered those uh, heating cores, they, they typically pressure test them at 1,000 PSI, but it's, it's really not recommended to run your machines more than 500 pounds of water pressure. And when these flash to steam, you get 10,000, if you took one cubic inch of water and flashed it to steam, it would actually make 10,000 cubic inches of vapor. So there's a, it's kind of what, you know, used to push the locomotives down the train track 100 years ago. So uh, that's the reason why we added the safety relief valve on this one here is because we figured well It's definitely going to flash to steam. We also put this rubber on here on the quick disconnect So that hopefully when you want to disconnect it when you're done with the job You can pull back on the QD and not burn your hand oh, Wow, it's 170 degrees What is this one at? 250? You know, since the uh, the heaters is sensing the temperature on the outside of the heater, it's not sensing in the water, it can definitely go past 200 degrees. And these red lights on each of the heaters only light up when it's less than, it's sensing less than 200. So you'll actually individually, sometimes when it's been on for a while, you'll see them turn off. And like this one right here, did that one turn off? Yeah, so this one already reached 200, so it turned itself off. So it's probably not going to get too much higher since this one is already not working anymore. But it reached 250, and this one's at 190. Overall, I think this is a pretty successful test that uh, if you want some additional heat in your cleaning, this might be a consideration. Uh, your water molecule vibration exponentially doubles every 18 degrees past 118 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you're just, just add 18 degrees from normal hot tap water, it's already going to make your cleaning twice as effective. So definitely an, an option. Anyway, thanks for watching.